So a few years ago, guys, I popped out one of my most successful videos to date. And it was a video about hatching stick insect over. Now in that video, I showed you my top three methods. Now, although all three of those methods is still successful to this very day, and I still use them to this very day, I tried a new method and it worked. It worked, and not only did it work, ladies and gentlemen, but I have successfully hatched one of the rarest species of stick insect in the UK hobby. I'm talking probably less than a handful of people owning this species at the time I am recording this video. It was amazing. and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Well, I nearly forgot to do my creepy crawly thing. That little bit of intro, I was just gonna keep on talking because I am well excited. Now, I'm not gonna reveal to you yet the species that it was that I managed to successfully hatch because I want to make sure that I can fully raise them and show them off on the channel. I don't want to be getting you guys excited about certain species and then fail them at kind of mid-size or so because then I wouldn't have been giving out the right care information. But the fact that they hatched under this method shows that this hatching method is definitely worth it and I had a high success rate with the hatching too. It's actually pretty simple as well. So whether this method will work for all species I'm unsure but we are going to give it a go and I reckon we can adapt it to all kinds of species too. Now the species that I did manage to get to hatch were a high humidity species but over can still dehydrate even if they are like an arid cat species in some cases. So providing there is no mold, keeping eggs in a humid environment, to my knowledge, shouldn't be a problem no matter where the insect is from. You'll see usually the eggs will hatch at the most lush time of the year. So it'll be the sort of most tropical time of the year where the plants are flourishing, where there is rainfall, so on and so forth, which is why keeping them in this condition to me is almost perfect. So I'm gonna actually show you the method that I use today and we're gonna put in my Lonchodes philippinicus over into this pot here for this method. So we are still using a live food tub. We are still using your cricket tubs. This one actually had locusts in originally because why not do things cheaply, right? Now, if you've got a giant like the Phryganistra, for example, a true giant species, I would go for something slightly taller than this, but this should work in most cases. So let me show you how we are gonna do this. So I chose these tubs because they have side ventilation. The top doesn't have ventilation. You can add your own holes in, maybe with a more arid species, but in a humid kept species, I actually just leave the top like this. First things first, something dead simple that all keepers have. A layer of soil in the bottom. Now, don't use soil from your gardens because you don't know what's in it. This is a mix of cocoa fiber and topsoil, but I would say either or is just fine. It just so happens that I had a mix. So next, we're gonna add in a little bit of sand. So this happens to actually be a sand and soil mix that I already had for uh, a scorpion species, but it will do just the same. Just one little handful like so. We're making a nice old mess on the table here today. All right, plain and simple. Sand holds your humidity a little bit better than soil when it comes to eggs, or it's like a prolonged period of time, at least in my experience. And next we're gonna add some wet moss okay we're going to tear it up right ba -ba 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 -ba. okay now we are going to mix this in you still want to keep it 
fairly flat, guys. Now, the next ingredient we are going to add is another item that you can find in like garden centers or household sort of shops and that is vermiculite. Now vermiculite is used in gardening as well as in this hobby. I mentioned it in um, that previous video about stick insect over. It's great at holding humidity so we are going to make a little layer along the top. Just a handful like so. A little bit more, there we are. And then we're going to just kind of spread this as evenly as we can across the top. Now, the next ingredient is optional. I'm doing it because I want the best success. If you can't get hold of this item or it's too expensive for you, leave it out and just follow the steps we've done so far. And that item is activated carbon. So I have a bag here. Now, why are we using activated carbon? Well, activated carbon is a purifier. Now we are going to be using quite a lot of moisture in this. So we want that moisture, that water to stay quite fresh. So what will happen is, if we just put a few bits of this along here, when the water is seeping through, what it will do is purify that. So that we're not left with just a box of stagnant water. Now I've not mastered which way to do this. It might be better to maybe add your carbon under the vermiculite, maybe add your carbon at the very bottom so where the water's holding. I am not sure yet, but in my opinion, having it here means water settling on the top is then being purified as it sinks back down. And then of course, when water is evaporating, it's coming up to the surface, hitting the lid and dropping back down again. So which is why I've chose the carbon to be here. Now, the next bit we're going to use is netting. So you can use any material for this as long as the holes are small within the netting. You can get fly screening, you can use an old pair of tights, uh, anything with small, tiny little holes. Now, I happen to have some material netting here. If you're going to use metal mesh, make sure it is a water resistant metal mesh, okay? Because we don't want it rusting, that will cause a world of problems. So we're just gonna roughly cut this. And we want to sit it in where it's going to cover the bottom. So let me move the camera so you can see exactly how I've got this here. So there we have it, you see there are no gaps. This, I can literally push down each corner of this edging. It is flush against the edges. Now this is gonna be your resting platform for your over. But before we add in the over, we are going to add in some water. And what we want to do is we want to fill the water to just below the bottom ventilation holes. Okay, so there's three strips of ventilation, I think, or is it four? No, it's four. So we've got one, two, three, four. And we want the water to be between the bottom and that fourth hole. So about halfway across that hole to that bottom. Does that make sense to you guys? I hope that makes sense. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just so excited to share this with you. And I'm kind of rushing what I'm saying here. So let's tip that water in now, all the way across, evenly across guys. So I'm putting myself at eye level so I can see. And we're just gonna pour, we're not misting. Because we're not doing a top layer, misting only covers your top layer and yes some of the moisture sinks down but not enough to keep it moist over a long period of time this method in normal temperatures i can then keep like it for a couple of weeks without actually having to mist again what you want to look out for is the glistening of your vermiculite see so i've put a little bit too much in here that a bit has spilt out the side that's fine as long as it spills out the sides and then stops you're at the right level. So no more is dripping out, so I'm at an okay level. Now the netting has raised a little bit, so I'm just gonna push that back down. And you can see a shininess, a glistening. When that shiny glistening look starts to vanish, that's when you can add a little bit more water. Now when I tip this, water does build up, but as long as the water is not building up when it's flat, then it's okay. Okay, so you want that glistening top, but you don't want any water being above the actual net. 
itself. So all we do then, let's bring this light over a moment. Should have had that light in the first place. But as I said, I was just desperate to show you guys how this works. Okay, so next we just layer our over on the top here. Now I have quite a lot of L. finipinicus over that I've just been keeping on tissue for the minute because I actually collected these up only about a week ago. I just tip the remnants that's fell out the tissue along here. Try and keep it to the middle guys. You want to keep your over nearest the middle. It doesn't matter if they're in a bit of a bundle either, okay? Because if you put them near the edges, you don't want them slipping in past your net. That's why it's important to have your netting flush to the edges or curving round, okay? Now, in this heat, kitchen towel just, it needs misting so often to keep the over moist, keep it hydrated. And dehydrated over will kill the animal inside. Okay, now there are some species that can survive with that over and complete dryness, but there's a difference between surviving and thriving. We've said it before. So now our over is rested along there. Let me show you properly. You see, they look like seeds, all of these. Rested along the top. That's exactly how we want them to be. The moisture is going to stay in there. It's going to heat up. It's going to hit the lid. It's going to drop back down, but it's not so wet that the eggs are just going to be drowned. This is ideal. Now there is one more thing we are going to add to the very top, and that is dry moss, okay? We're going to rip up some dried old moss. We don't need this moss to soak in the moisture. Obviously it will soak in a little bit, but as the water is not past the level of the netting, it won't be much. And this, this dry moss isn't actually placed here, and you want this in really small pieces by the way. This moss isn't placed here for a humidity value. This moss is placed here because when the stick insects hatch from their over, it gives them something to grasp onto. And when they've got something to grasp onto, they can pull themselves free from the egg casing much, much easier. Now you don't want to overdo it with this because you don't want them to end up being stuck, like coming out of the egg and boof, they're hitting against the moss. You want them to be able to just grab that moss and pull themselves free. So we're just doing a very thin layer here. When you start adding more and more over to this, just sprinkle it across just across like that. It will fall off the sides of the moss anyway and leave the moss on the top. So I think this will pretty much do it. Now, as I've said, I have done one species like this, but it is a rare species. It is a species that has next to no information on care for, except that they are from a humid environment in the wild and we have had a great success rate with them. So. Although it might just be one species, it was an excellent species. It was a species we know very little about and I just think that this method will top all other methods. As I said, really large species maybe have in a taller container. I've just realized I've put my wonky lid on. We don't want the wonky lid. We want the good lid, the one that had the locust written on. And make sure you label this as well. So I am going to be putting a label on off the camera saying L. philippidicus and I will also put in their PSG number. So there we have it guys, a simple method for high success hatch rate for your stick insects. The good thing about using live food tubs guys is they stack. If I had another one up on here, it stacks. You can make an entire stack of these and because the ventilation is the sides and not the top, by putting one on the top is not going to stop any extra ventilation flow. It looked simple, but I had to share it with you because if we, can, if we can find better methods for stick insect hatching, then I'm all game for it. I'll try all sorts. There are cup methods as well. There's methods I haven't shown you before that will allow a cup on the top of vermiculite in a tub so that when they hatch, they can climb straight upwards. I'm not too fussed about that because I don't keep them in the hatchery very long. As soon as these guys have hatched from the egg incubation pot, I move them straight out into a nursery. Whereas a lot of keepers will kind of leave them in these pots for a little while, for a molt or two. I don't do that, which is why having a pot the size of a cricket tub is absolutely fine for me. So, if you found this video helpful, please share it with your friends, please share it with other stick enthusiasts. Um, I'm sure there are people that have done very, very similar things themselves because 
stick insect people, stick insect hobbyists, you know, we try all sorts for the best for our animals, um, but not everyone shares their techniques. So there you go, I'm sharing it with you. If you haven't seen the Project Paradise video, what this t-shirt is all about, please check that out on my channel too. Just look up Bug Realms Project Paradise. That video will be there. It's the most important subject or topic or challenge or project, however you wanna see it, that I've ever done on YouTube. I'm that excited about this. I'm literally sweating while I'm talking to you. That is minging. But yeah, right. I'm gonna go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you found this video helpful. I will let you guys know how all the rest of my overdo with this, even the ones that are supposed to be kept in arid environments when they're older. And yeah, wow, exciting stuff. I'm just, oh, I cannot wait to show you that species, guys. I cannot wait, but I don't want to jinx myself by revealing it too early. But yeah, hoo, hoo, hoo. thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.